want to make a little bit of a, a change. It's not just me who's presenting. It's actually I'm um, co-opting the work of uh, a student of mine, brilliant student, Rachel Valera. So hopefully you'll get a certificate and uh, refrigerator and magnet and other things. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about what we've come up with as some recent um, ideas that we'd like to explore. I also want to introduce you to two outstanding colleagues of mine. Uh, the first one is Dr. Martha Strickland. She's a professor up in the uh, Department of the School of Behavioral Science and Education. She's an educator extraordinaire who's also in, in charge, uh, co-in charge of our honors program here at uh, Penn State Harrisburg. <clears throat> so Martha, please uh, enjoy network and take advantage of her. She really is an outstanding educator. I've, I've learned so much from her. Uh, the other individual is an engineer. Uh, Think highly of him, it's fine, as Eric, uh, I'm sure you will. Uh, Seth Wolpert, over in the back there. Uh, when in times of trouble and when we need outreach and doing robotics and all sorts of cool stuff, Seth is there. Uh, Johnny on the spot to help out, work with students, and uh, was one of the first individuals, along with Martha, I thought, to come uh, and share the evening with us. We will be joined uh, in transit uh, Dr. Susanna Gow, who is the uh, very inter much interested in educational outreach, especially her project right now, uh, pet project is Women in Sciences and Engineering. So she will be joining us. She's on her way back from University Park. So she will be joining us around 6. So please take advantage of us. During the evening, if you'd like to sneak out and see anything <coughs> on the campus, please feel, feel free to ask. I, we hang out in the building right over there. Uh, and remember, uh, I'm going to give you some words of scientific advice. <clears throat> if it's green, it's biology. If it stinks, it's chemistry. If it doesn't work, it's physics. Uh, and if you get paid an awful lot of money for doing it, uh, it's usually engineering. Um, so <laughs> take that to the point. Uh, the most important thing I'm going to tell you and give you are some cards. Uh, here, Miss Bolera, Rachel, raise your hand. Uh, she also has cards with her name, and uh, I'm. You're not going to want to talk to me. You're going to want to talk to her. She has some interesting things, ideas, and activities uh, to entice you all within your school districts. So this is the title of my talk. Let me just go through some of the things here. Uh, <clears throat> welcome. Thank you. Uh, to Natasha Schoenhofer. I like that kind of flows. Um, and of course to your support groups and uh, the uh, teacher enrichment program supporters. Quick personal history. I am a science geek. Um, I started my career at Cornell at Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. I went to Yale as faculty. Came here at the Med Center. Worked my way up. Big research program. Trained outstanding students. Uh, taught medical students, which is not really teaching as you know it. Uh, you just show up and you basically they do all the, the work uh, and do really a, exceptional things. Uh, eventually, about 10 years ago, I got really interested in working with Lincoln and Cheney, students, uh, underrepresented or served students, and was very much interested in leveling the playing fields, health professions, disparities, etc. at the Med Center. And started going from basic science into a whole variety of grant support from NIH, NSF, uh, related to summer programs. We actually have um, Ms. Haney, a uh, teacher at Steelton High Spire down at Hershey. We had a grant called Science Education Partnership Award through the NIH. We worked with her and others. My, my big claim to fame, which no one knows about, is that uh, there was a superintendent. We were on Lake Race, uh, Racetown Lake. She said, okay, big shot, what would you do? You teach all of these outstanding students, and believe me, they made me look good, some of these kids. Tenure, right up to the top, with these outstanding MD, PhDs, and we're doing great stuff. <clears throat> but she said, okay, what would you do? How would you teach science? What would you do in a classroom? How would you do it differently? We have difficulties. It's a local school district. And I said, well, of course, I would do this and that. I would build it all on X, Y, and Z. And then I would uh, have students do this, hands-on, speakers, all this. 
And she said, okay, uh, it's June, we're starting in August. Go ahead, create a school. And I was like, I, 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 well, um, and we created a special exploratory high school, ninth through 12th grade, a melange in the morning of students, most of whom had no background in chemistry or biology. Um, we called it medicine, health science, and engineering. Um, it was the most difficult thing I ever did. It was fabulous. Uh, we built it all around genetics and disease gene network, held nothing back. Uh, students were a little apprehensive, but they think they liked it. The parents loved it. You know, Johnny and Sarah, they'd never been so busy and excited. Um, and we did a lot of interesting things. I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, I'm going to just tell you just briefly and introduce Rachel, who will talk about some of the things that we've been contemplating. So, traditional science guy, a lot of research funding, and then ultimately getting into uh, teaching undergrads. What brought me here was that I was doing a lot of outreach, K through 12, pipeline programs, summer, summer research things, leveling playing fields, and we were building a biology program here. And somebody said, hey, why don't you come over and help build the program? Uh, and I was the last one out of a room one time, and turn off the light and also you the chair. So that's how it happened, and the hardest thing I've ever done. But it actually brought me into the trenches, into the real playing field. Every day, Rachel can attest to this, Dr. Strickland is involved in the honors programs. We have students lining up, hey, I'm going to take this course. Hey, I'm going to go to PA school. Hey, I'm going to buy medical school. What about this? What about that? So it brought me right into the mix with students, and I've learned a, a number of things. And these are the things that I'm dealing with and trying to build programs. I could spend hours on all the things we're doing, and it's through the auspices and the kindness of people like Martha and Seth and others that we're doing a number of really cool things and trying to get our students to achieve their aspirations. That's the bottom line. We, and I'll talk a little bit about it, but some of the things we see, and you guys are out there in the field with students every day, we see these things. Students ill-prepared for mathematics. They are scared. Oh, uh, calculus one? Uh, uh, maybe I'll take that in my junior year. Okay. Uh, apprehension. We see students coming in poor reading mode. Major problem. Do you read the New York Times? Do you know what the word culture is? No, 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 and no. How about a science paper? Do you ever, you're not to write an abstract. Do you ever need a science paper? No, 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 and no. Big problem. Lack of science preparation. I don't mean any. I don't mean to cast any aspersions, but some students are coming in. They kind of know what science is. It's like, like observation, right? And it's experiments, and things like that. They come in here and they're just not as well prepared as even they admit and would like, uh, or as they would admit themselves. So we see the lack of science preparation. This sounds like a real gloom and doom list, but it's just some of the realistic things that we are seeing students coming in uh, to our program. Unrealistic career aspirations. Fifty percent of the students you guys sent to this little school, this humble campus, fifty percent want to go to become doctors. Do you know that? Do you talk to your students? Do you know that what, what all of these students want to do? Fifty percent. I want to be an orthopedic surgeon. I'd like to be a pediatric surgeon. Um, and that's all great. I, I think it's fabulous. I don't want to, to limit any student's aspirations. I want to help them along, and that's what we're trying to do. But they don't have plan Bs and Cs. Not everybody, as I'm trying to tell them, is going to make medical school. Our success rate here is about one student a year. One, if we're lucky. Right now we have three students who have, I have everything crossed. They've interviewed at Hershey and elsewhere. We're waiting. We're waiting. So we're trying to make that a little bit better. This is, I told the people here when I have a chance to talk to them, it's canary in the coal mine. If we could get students at the point where they're successfully competitive for medical school, they're going to be successful for a lot of other things. The plans B, C, D, and E. And if we could teach them the concepts that are associated with the MCAT 
examination that gets them in the first step in the medical school, we're doing a good job. Am I reading a very I'm oh, sorry. I get all pumped up. All right. Inertia preparing graduate career applications. So many students come to me and they'll say, uh, you're the chair? Yeah, come on. What's up? Uh, I want to go to medical school. And who are you? I haven't seen you before. Where, where have you been? Um, yeah, I'm so and so. I'm a junior. Junior? You're a junior, you want to go to medical school? Tell me, have you done shadowing? Have you done any research experiences? Have you done anything global? Have you traveled anywhere? Are you in the honors program? Have you done any volunteer work, hospice work, Bethesda mission? What's going on? How are your grades doing? Uh, 3.2. I, I haven't done any of those things. Persons lost, missed the boat, lost, lost out. It's too late. And so these are the things that if we had a most perfect society, Teaching students, building awareness, getting them into school, having them coming out running, and ultimately succeeding in achieving. It breaks my heart sometimes. Hesitancy to ID and interact with mentors. A lot of these kids, just as I said, you uh, don't train. <clears throat> All of these things uh, apply to many of our students, and especially to our minority students. It seems that they're even one step behind in terms of this curve, getting up and running and being competitive. And that's something that I really want to see change. So how to improve? I'm going to quickly just throw these out there. <coughs> I have no recipe. I have no idea. The only thing I'm doing is trying to get my time and energy and meeting with students, right? I mean, students are lined up. Next, come in. The doctor will see you come through. <coughs> so the things like, for instance, research. This is number one. And you... I've been on NIH study sections and panels of going there tonight for tomorrow on science, STEM gaming, computing, virtual reality, all these things, looking at grants, how to help students learn STEM. So I've been there and doing a lot of things, putting my two cents in the National Mentorship Network, all sorts of things to help build our infrastructure of STEM professionals. The most important thing, research. Research, research, research. Come in and not just watching somebody pipette. Ten students around with a pipetter and a tube. Oh, wow. Actually doing something. Here's a hypothesis you're going to be testing. You're going to be doing these measurements. You're going to be growing this plant. You're going to be growing these bacteria. You're going to be isolating a plasma. Um, it takes money. It takes money. But in terms of success, in terms of keeping students, especially underrepresented students, keeping them nose to the grindstone and in the program, research is one of the best and most important things that you can provide that experience students. Of course, journals and journal clubs, learning how to read a paper, analyzing data, understanding the hypothesis that's being tested, so critical. Students who get ultimately do this and take this up, they'll come, they have come and sought me out. Can we have a journal club? We have a petition here of 25 students. We want you to teach the journal club or oversee it during the lunch hour. That's where you need to go and where we need to be. Health science clubs. We have one that's burgeoning. And actually, we have Rachel talk about the next iteration of that. But bringing in health professionals, bringing in the surgeons, the people from admissions, the PA director, teaching students this is what you're going to need to navigate the long road uh, to or towards application. So that's very, very important. Mentorship teams, not just one mentor, not just the chair, but multiple groups. And then talking about that student, how is Rachel doing? How did she do in this class? How did you do in your class? Does she understand the concept? And then testing those concepts. This is something we've also been talking about. Having something, a candidacy exam at the end of the sophomore year. You get through your 100 course, 110, your 200s. All right, what is an allele? What is polymorphism? What's the idea of sequence and what's the gene? And then going through that and testing the students' knowledge, keeping them aware of where they should be, and helping them along, not embarrassing them, but saying, maybe you want to thought up on this, or maybe read this book. It's really critical. Uh, MCAT preparation course, we've been talking about it. This is critical. We've been talking at the highest levels. It could be something that will bring money back in, but working with Kaplan and others, teaching students how to prepare for the medical 
uh, entrance examination called the MCAT, so it's quite, quite critical. Better advising. It's amazing how poorly our students are advised. And these are personal experiences from the, the level of the chair, talking to faculty. Uh, you know, faculty sometimes don't know the curriculum. They don't know, you should take this, or you would be better at this course. Don't take neurobiology. Take this course because it may be more important and it fits in there. And that's why, oh, you want to go to veterinary school. OK, well, that might be critical. The histology may be more important than evolutionary biology. So better advising uh, and increased classroom instruction rigor. Uh, we find, especially small schools like this, you want to send this to my administration, it doesn't matter. I don't really count, tell them anyway. But we want to basically have increased rigor, teaching the journal articles that are on the cutting edge right now, not the textbook that's 10 years old. This is how DNA replicates. You have it in bio, in drill bio, later on in biology 200, and again in biology 400. And it's just too much redundancy. So a new approach that we've been talking about, and I've been thinking about for a long, long time at Hershey, and now over here at Penn State Hartsburg, is partnerships between institutes of higher education and local school districts. Promoting the pathways, and especially with our underserved students or underrepresented students. Get them involved and get them to be thinking about their science in a little different way. And this is where I'm going to introduce and bring forward Rachel Belier, who's going to talk about maps. This is something new, and so this is why you want to talk with her. I'm going to sit down and just fade away for the evening. But she's the person you want to talk to. Because she has an interesting potential service or resource for you folks and your classroom. So I'll turn it over to you, uh, Rachel. Hmm. Um, my name is Rachel Valera. I am a senior in our biology program. Um, I'm also in the honors program here, and I'm president of uh, MAPS. MAPS stands for Minority Association of Pre-Medical Students. Um, and our overarching uh, mission is to increase um, minority matriculation into these pre-health and um, health programs later on. Um, so it's really SNMA MAPS, so that stands for the Stu Student National Medical Association um, and my Minority Association of Pre-Medical Students. So we're talking about the graduate sector, the medical students um, that are working together with the undergraduate um, students. Um, it is the oldest minority um, pre-health association. It was founded in 1964 and there are 10 regions. Um, Mass at Penn State Harrisburg is the newest chapter in Region 8. So Region 8 is comprised of Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Delaware. One of our major objectives um, in SNME Maps is our pipeline mentorship program. Um, and locally, um, involved in this program as of right now we have the Penn State um, Harrisburg maps we will have the uh, our sponsoring SNMA chapter at the Penn State College of Medicine and we are in the infantile stages of creating a program with the Harrisburg uh, school district um, we're focusing our efforts on SciTech High and Marshall Math and Science Academy um, and we'll be working with Mr. Ross Berger and uh, Cheryl Capizzoli. I don't know, if, is anyone here from uh, Harrisburg, Harrisburg School District? So we'll be working with those two, um, and they're helping us figure out the logistics for our undergraduate um, and graduate volunteers. So a little bit about this program. So for our SciTech students, we want to enroll them into the HEPREP program. Um, and the HEPREP program will um, expose them to scientific-related activities 
and um, health professions. So, like Dr. Choney mentioned, a major issue here is like 50% of the um, science undergrads want to go into medical school, but they don't know about like physical therapy. They don't know about PA school. They don't know about all these other avenues that they can take um, still within the health um, career pathway. Uh, so we want to expose um, high schoolers and even um, elementary and middle school students to these other professions. Um, so for the Marshall Math and Science students, uh, we want to enroll um, those students into the YESEP program. So this will stimulate their interest in science and health. So at that stage, we found that, that was, that's what's most important for like the eighth graders. And we also wanted to help them transition from eighth grade um, subject matter to ninth grade subject matter. All right. So what are our roles um, in the pipeline mentorship program? So for the pre-health sector, we want to work with teachers and align with their lesson plans. So it's easy for us to say we want to go in there and uh, we want to help students with math. We want to help them with science, but um, there are intricacies of, involved. We want to know where the students are in their lesson plan. So if they're learning like how to build polymers a certain week, we want to come. We want our tu tutors to come in prepared for those kind of questions. Um, we want to relate our weekly science lessons to medical topics as well. So if I go back to the subject of polymers, building monomers to polymers. All right, so they're going to learn and be tested on those basic concepts, but we want to introduce them to how it applies in um, the healthcare field. Like, say, for example, how it's involved in um, heart disease, um, cholesterol buildup. So we want to introduce um, how it's applied in the real world. We also want to work with juniors and seniors to review application processes um, for their desired undergraduate school. So I know that they have their advisors at school, they have a number of mentors, but we also want to be available as mentors to kind of review their application or statements. All right. And our sponsoring SNMA chapter has agreed to uh, to bring on physician presentations monthly if allowed, um, if the time allows for certain schools. Um, and these presentations include activities like heart rate activity, where students can measure their resting versus active heart rate. So that way they think about science, but they know how math is applied as well. Um, we want them to measure lung capacity. And they found that Students love the lung capacity exercise, and again, math is applied as well. Um, stitching and suturing, um, these activities are just fun, like who doesn't want to learn how to stitch um, and actually play the role of a doctor at that moment. So we found that these kind of activities keep the students <coughs> engaged and excited about those topics and the career path. All right, so why is it important um, for undergrads to participate in something like the Pipeline Mentorship Program? All right, so I feel, and Dr. Choney feels as well, that to teach a concept is to know the concept. And undergrads are in a position where we have to think about the level of our knowledge in any subject. We need to prepare for a more in-depth um, approach for some of these topics to prepare for the graduate school level. But we think that it is important to be able to take some of the topics and subjects and break it down to a more basic level. So we can, we can show that we've mastered an idea, a concept in our education if we're able to explain it to at a high school level, at a middle school level. So through the Pipeline Mentorship Program, um, our undergrads can exercise this skill. Also, we want our students to think about this as a positive feedback loop in biology and within our community. And this ties back to our overarching goal is to increase 
um, underserved matriculation into these pre-health and um, graduate school programs. All right, so with this uh, positive feedback loop, we hope to give back to our community, and we hope that um, the community can then benefit from what we've offered, and that in that way we can, we can increase that matriculation. And that's just, again, how we hope to do this. And keep in mind that for now, because we are developing this program, we are working with the Harrisburg School District um, because we feel that it is, that's what we can handle for now. We're only 20 to 30 students in maths as of right now. Um, we want to open this program up to the Science Health Club, um, and we can take on more school districts. Um, with their help. And with that, I will open up the floor to anyone.